Have you ever worked with a file so big that every time you try to spin around a model, the whole screen freezes? And late at night, when you're about to hit render button, the whole Rhino goes white and crashes. Happens way too often, especially when you're working with a scene with a lot of trees. So you can see a tree object can contain tens of thousands of faces, and having tens of thousands of them can bog down the whole system. So how can we make this easy? Well, one solution is to use proxy. So proxies are basically um, much lighter files that are easier to preview, but when you hit the render button, they are able to reference in the original fully fledged textured model back into the scene so that you can render the, in its full glory. Now, we'll try creating one today so that we can lighten, lighten the scene that you're seeing right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is to take one of these trees and then turn it into a proxy and bring it back into Rhino. So here's a file that only has a single tree in. As you can see, when you preview it, it looks pretty nice. When I hit render, that looks even better. Now, the first thing we need to do before we get started is to actually move our mesh into the origin. So I'll choose the base of the tree and then type in zero for our move point two. And that places our model exactly at the center of our Rhino file. And the reason being that when you export the V-Ray on um, proxy, they default the origin as the insert location. You'll see soon, so don't worry about it. So I'll choose V-Ray, I'll type in proxy export and choose the file destination, which is gonna be my project folder. Or better yet, you should put it in your resource folder so you can reference it in, in the future again. And I'll name the file pine tree because this is a model of a pine tree. And for the preview type, you'll see that there are three major kinds. And to demonstrate that, I actually made created models with all three kinds. So if the original mesh looks like that, the three respective export types um, represent trees in different ways. Face skipping simply lightens up the density of your tree and your model, and refined clustering kind of like analyzes your model so that they can best represent it in a volumetric way. As you can see, these are almost identical when you see them from afar. And for the vertex clustering, I'm not exactly what's going on. I'm sure there's a very smart algorithm going on and there are some use cases, but it doesn't really work for our case. For most of the time, I use face skipping because this is actually the fastest way to export and preview. But refined clustering is also good when you have a lot of time or if you're looking to use this model over and over again. It takes a little bit more time to export, but it might be worth it in the end. So for our demonstration, we'll choose face skipping. So let's go back to our original model. And then choose the whole thing and type in V-Ray ex proxy export. So I'll go to our resource folder, type in pine tree. And for the preview type, we'll choose face skipping. We'll choose the options as default, but if your proxy is still really heavy, then you can reduce your faces in preview. I'll just leave it as it is for now and choose export. So if you enable the last option, V-Ray will automatically replace your mesh with the newly created proxy. And now this file is ready to be imported into another Rhino. So before I go back to our original scene, I need to show you that there's a slight problem with V-Ray proxy. So here's a separate Rhino file, and I'm gonna simply import our mesh. So I'll type in V-Ray proxy import. And choose the file that we have just exported. And as you can see, the insertion point puts the tree exactly where we want it to be. And now if we try rendering this, you'll see that it's actually missing the textures, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny, but V-Ray proxies apparently only contain the geometry information. So the texture is completely separate. So as you can see, if you go to our asset editor and choose our pine map, like they're missing all the bitmap textures or any kind of map on the channels. So what we actually have to do is to export the texture manually and then import it back, which is actually a lot of work. And this often happens when you're trying to import someone else's proxy. If that happens, you need to track down the original file or the texture export that the person has created. 
So the best practice is to actually export the proxy as its own Rhino file, which will maintain its um, texture information. If I haven't shown you, I'll just try rendering our proxy in the original tree file. So you can see that our current tree is fully textured, but once we go back to the imported proxy, it doesn't have any. So what we could actually do, there are two things we could do. One is to export our texture, which is done by right-clicking on your texture and then choosing Save As, and then you can name it however you want. But better yet, what you can do is actually to export your proxy as its own Rhino file, and then name this as Pine Tree Proxy. Pine Tree Export. Okay. And what this allows um, the next person to do is to actually just simply open up the Rhino file and copy in copy and paste the files back into their desired project. So this is the pine tree export that we have just exported. And then copy this. And then you'll see that this contains all the texture information. And when you hit render, you'll see the tree in its fully textured glory. So now what you can do is copy this, copy the clipboard, control C. And then once it's done copying, I can go over to our original document and then put it back into the scene. Now, another best practice when you're populating a large scene like this is to block your object. So instead of like having many copies of it, have same one, um, have a block reference, have a block reference then. So I'll paste this and then zoom to selected. I'll choose the base of the tree and then hit home so that you can come back to what you were viewing just now. And then place it exactly where it's supposed to be. I'll invert the selection by type in invert. And then delete the heavy mesh that we had in the past. And once you hit OK, as you can see, all the references have all turned into the same proxy that we had. You can see how quickly you can spin around your model uh, without actually compromising any of the intricacy of your 3D model. Now when I hit render, we can see the whole scene in its original beauty. This technique can be not only useful in proxying the trees, but in many other instances. For example, with placing a lot of people in your scene. Speaking of people, did you know that we have our own 3D figure pack? You can find this in the link below, and they also contain meshes, original meshes that are proxied and blocked for your convenience. Alright, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. If you want to see our future tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.